Hello friends, welcome to Life Scientific. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more updates. I am sure you have often faced a question in high school or in college. Why are RBCs biconcave? Suppose you search this topic in YouTube and you end up finding no relevant information. So let's get started with our query why are red blood cells biconcave? As you can see in the figure this is an electron micrograph of human RBCs. You can clearly see the RBCs are pinched inwards in from both the sides. Now let us know some proteins involved in the whole process. First one is spectrin, second is actin, tropomyosin, ankyrin and glycophorin. Now don't get confused by these names. I shall be delivering you the importance later on. Now first we need to understand what is spectrin. Spectrin is a long thin flexible rod like protein consisting of two antiparallel alpha and beta chains. Now these alpha and beta chains are 106 amino acid long as you can see in the figure and they also contain flexible link between the domains. The spectrin cytoskeleton is present within the RBC and is riveted to the membrane through various membrane proteins. As you can see in the figure, this one is a spectrin cytoskeleton. The spectrin homodimers, these are the homodimers, they are linked to one another into a net like meshwork by junctional complexes. You can see in this figure all the spectrin molecules, the four spectrin molecules meet at the junctional complex. This one is a junctional complex, this one, this and this one. There are four junctional complex in the figure. Now let us focus over the junctional complex first. These complexes are com composed of the short actin filaments that is 13 monomers in length. It also involves other protein like band 4.1 as you can see marked in the figure, tropomyosin that is a yellow one and adducin the purple one. And this provides the stability to the whole system. The spectrins they come and join with each other at the junctional complex and the junctional complexes actually provide stability to the whole system. If we look in the second picture, we see ankyrin, the yellow one, and band 3, the green colored one. They are binding to the spectrin and on right, glycophorin binds to the junctional complex and provides the much needed stability. Now glycophorin 1, the glycophorin molecule is actually exposed outside the RBC, this lower level is outside the RBC and these things are inside the RBC. So the glycophorin molecule are exposed outside the RBC. This has some importance we will be discussing in some other video. And this whole system of junctional complex and spectrin, this provides a stability to the RBC membrane and pinches the membrane inwards, thus providing the biconcave shape. Now a question may arise in your mind which is a very natural question why isn't the shape biconvex now i will be addressing this question one by one the whole cytoskeleton forces the membrane to bend inwards and impart the biconcave shape as we have discussed the whole cytoskeleton is actually actually pulling the cell membrane inwards The spectrin based cytoskeleton enables the red blood cell to withstand the stress on its membrane as it is forced through narrow capillaries. Now imagine the blood movement in our body. It moves through narrow capillaries reaching out the cells 
and when it moves through these nado capillaries the blood cells actually withstand a huge amount of stress now if there was no biconcave shape this stress would have been maximum and the blood cells would have ruptured due to the stress now let's come to the third point if the shape were, was biconvex the rbcs would face hindrance to move through capillaries now imagine the shape of rbc to be biconvex that is the membrane is forced outwards this would produce a much more hindrance and much more stress over the rbcs i hope i have explained you this topic the reason behind the shape of an rbc to be biconcave subscribe to my channel like scientific for more freshly brewed content. Mm -hmm.